Hey, and welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Creation Station. Just got back from Nashville. Really interesting, cool summer trip here in 2022. And I'm reviewing something that is a has a general topic, and that is how to get the most of your plugins uh, with the onboard processing, which is to see if these uh, instruments can sit better in the mix. This is a lovely bass by Scarby called the Scarby MM Bass Amped, which I had for a while and just never got around to installing it. You know, so I had the MM bass before and it's really lovely, but this is the one with the amplified version. And it's a bass that was recorded with flat wound strings. So here's a interesting thing. Let's take a look how it sounds. I'm gonna play a little keyboard bass. Here you can see that it's got like a whole bunch of lovely legato features. You can see if you watch the keys over here in this area down on the keyboard, what happens when I'm when I'm playing and where the legato sets in. So you can drag this legato on for several notes. Look, I just just extended it all the way to an octave, which is pretty impressive. You do that fast enough and program all that all the notes overlap, you can actually have a realistic slide up towards a target note. Let's see. So the legato on it is really really great, and uh, the sound itself I thought could use. A little tweak. As some of my Brazilian friends say, it could use a little help. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up this bass because you can. This is one of those glorious plugins that you can edit. So let's start tweaking it. The first thing I want to tell you is that if you tweak these sounds, and let's say you want to put an equalizer in, you have to first turn on all groups. Because If you don't, for example, right here, look what the bass does. If I play two notes sequentially, look. It's playing this patch first and then that patch. So that's a alternate um, fingering script that prompts the MIDI notes as they come in to trigger the notes of one particular patch, which is the E sustained index finger here, which is highlight. And then after that, this one. You know, some people would refer to that as a round robin script, which involves two notes. These are actually two separate samples. One of them played with the index finger and the other one with the middle finger. So that's very realistic because that's what a bass player cont continually does. But da 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 da, you know, it will be done with two different fingers. Because of that, if I were to, for example, plug in a graphic equalizer over here, and my favorite one is the Solid G. It's got a lot of bands to work with. Let's see here. There it is. And now that I have this patch, the sustained sound of the of the of the low string here with the index finger, there is now a graphic equalizer in there. And because I turned on all groups, you'll also see it in this particular patch over here with the middle finger, the higher notes, everywhere there is a graphic equalizer plugged in, and every one of the pathways, the sonic pathways of these different patches, because look how many there are. It's just incredible. All the trills, pull-offs, slide-ups, harmonics, whatever this bass has in features, all of those need to be sent through the same equalizer. So what I do for simplicity's sake is I just turn edit all groups on and I plug this EQ in wherever I want it. So I built a, um, the first thing, you know, in looking at this sound is that it's very mid-range oriented. It seems to be kind of having this sound where the fundament of the note is there. Also, guys, it's got like a like a higher ingredient um, where an equalizer where you might want to pull out some low mids. So I've done that and I'm, I've got a preset for that. I'm going to show it to you real quick. Here it is. So you see that I actually brought up 
frequencies, the low frequencies around 100 hertz here, reduced 300 hertz by 4.8 decibels on the narrowest bandwidth. So now the volume came down a little bit, so I would have actually have to compensate over here. There's a reason why I'm not, I'm having this lower, because there's another plugin after that. Um, I raised a little bit here at two kilohertz, just a little bit. So that's all. These are the three bands that I modified. And that now covers all of these patches. All right, so now we got an EQ built in there. The next thing I wanted to show you, which wasn't available when this bass was built, when this program, the Scarby MM Bass Amp was built, this feature of Contact 6 wasn't available. And I'll show you what it is. It's an amp called the Bass Pro. It's now being installed. And I have a preset that I built for that. I want to show you what it looks like. Here's the Scarby Stingray Bass. So you can see boosting a good bit of, you know, fundamental lows. Again, taking some something out around 500 hertz and lifting up a little treble. And now look at this. Well, let me turn both of these plugins of them, both the EQ and the bass amp off. It sounds good, but it, it doesn't sound as wide. You know, it sounds like a narrower bass, which would be nice in certain R&B styles. That's kind of cool. But I want this bass to be more universally usable. So let's turn them both back on. That's two things you can do. The Bass Pro has a whole bunch of usable features in it. One of them is called Drive. Some of those you may like and others you may not, so you adjust to taste. And we've got a little bit of a, you know, grunge in here, just a little bit of drive in here. That sounds like fun. Let's see what that sounds like in context. Here you go. So all of a sudden, this bass sounds richer, warmer, fuller. Um, there's still things I thought about doing to make it fit into the mix even better. So here's what those things are. Let's turn on the output section over here. And the output section has a few plugins in it. And those are controlled by the aux sends here, aux 3 and aux 4. I'm sure you guys know that you turn the auxes on or off over here. So aux 3 is a send that sends a signal out to this mixer strip over here, where I put a high pass on it. Let me show you what it sounds like. I want to take this down to zero, and then bring this, oh, hello. So what you're hearing here is the sound of the bass, but through a convolution plugin, which is, it's called L96 Room Clear. So it's an emulation of a digital reverb system. And so in order not to make the sound muddy, there's an equalizer before it. First of all, it has a high pass at almost 450 hertz. So it takes most of the upper mid range and treble and lets it go through the system because you don't want to have that wallop of reverb kind of ring out into the sides of the mix. That's something I find unattractive sounding. Then there's the equalizer. I'm even, what am I doing here? Knocking out a little bit more sub lows over here on that equalizer. And then it goes to the convolution. So now let's con combine that with the full sound of the bass with the main signal. Mix 
makes me think to maybe dial back a little bit on the drive. The drive has a little bit of a bitey sound, which many of the, a lot of the uh, contact internal processing has that kind of bitey sound. So I'm going to dial back a little. That's pretty nice. So you just got a little room around the bass now, because if you take it away, you notice it. That's totally one dimensional. If now you bring a little bit of that in here, all of a sudden you've got life and some air around it. Exaggerate it, it sounds like the. So that, you know, that's kind of fun sounding. I'm going to dial it back a little bit to make it more subtle. It really depends. In a mix, you might want to want more to have to give the bass its own character and its own room. The other thing is a parallel compressor. So in this, uh, in AUX4, which, like I said, gets fed from here now, this is AUX4, feeds into, a, first of all, an equalizer. And there, in the equalizer, we are adding a whole bunch of lows at 80 hertz. So it's very warm sub-lows, removing a lot of mid-range frequencies here, around 700. A lot of the high mids as well, around 2 kilohertz. And a lot of the treble, too. So this creates the sustain for the bass. Here it is. So that just gives the bass some more extra warmth. Let's add it now to the natural signal here on up at one. Let's take it out. It's already good, but this kind of fills it in just a little bit more even. Let's turn the early reflections back on, you know, the convolution reverb. So that's very usable. Let's see if that makes it even smoother in the mix overall. Here we go. Let's play back. Yep, now I can even trim the bass back for about a dB or so. Let's do that again. There, now let's go back again. Let's listen to the sound a little bit for another second, and then I'm going to turn these additions that we added to the whole thing off so you can hear it in comparison. Okay, now we're going to take off the convolution reverb, take off the parallel compression, and remove the equalizer and the bass pro which i love so now we have the plug in the way it sounded before and to my ear that sounds as if the you know if somebody recorded a bass with a microphone as if they stepped back like like four feet or or six or eight feet with the microphone it's, the bass just went stepped back and got narrower, you know. So this is a way to get more out of this plugin. It sits better in the mix. It sounds more exciting. To me, it sounds more real, actually, you know, because obviously there's room around it, and the samples themselves were not sampled with rooms in them, you know. So that is a lovely plugin that is deserving, in my opinion, of a little tweaking, and this is how you do it. I hope this was interesting for you guys. Please do subscribe to the channel. I've got endless amounts of videos coming down over the next few months and years. 
because I'm not going to stop. I've got so much good stuff to share with new plugins that are coming out. Please subscribe to the channel. Give it a video like and uh, come to the website. There's a whole bunch of custom sounds that I've created with my little team over here at the Creation Station. So please stay creative, stay healthy, uh, stay sane in these interesting times, as the Chinese proverb says, may you live in interesting times. And boy, is that ever true. So let's greet them with a sense of curiosity rather than being nervous and uh, uh, in enjoy the creativity. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Stefan Oberoff signing off from the Creation Station. Be well. Peace.